Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. Alright, here's another entry based on your suggestions. I'm probably going to do one more of these and then wrap it up for this series. And then I'll probably either start working on some new either cryptids or monsters or maybe even urban legends. So be on the lookout for that. This one was suggested and the reason why I picked this one was because rather than it being your rather similar telltale type of UFO abduction case. It certainly has those characteristics within the story, but there seems to be a slight twist within that very same tale as well. And I'll mention that here in a few minutes, what that twist is. It certainly puts things in a different perspective, and I'll give my own thoughts onto that the, I guess specific change uh, later on because it kind of adds a different angle but it gives me more of a skeptic look into it so all very fascinating information so it has to do with the case known as the Betty Andreessen alien abduction other times it's known as the Betty Andreessen case and this happened to a woman there in 1967 and it also involved her and then some of her family as well so lots of good information to share here it is and so again this is a case that started on just one day it only happened one time but it was back on January 25th 1967 there in a place called South Ashburnham Massachusetts so the way it worked was there was this woman Betty Andreessen who you're looking at a picture of here she lived in her home there along with her children she had a total of seven children there was her mother and then also her father so a whole big uh, family essentially within that home during that specific night the way it was described was towards the 630 period or so and I'm guessing at that time I guess based on the time of the year it was the dark of night too considering what happens next that's when they noticed that there were some lights coming across the house briefly blinking so it was has to be the nighttime because that's the only way really that you could see these lights I guess through uh, through the night otherwise it would be a lot more harder during daylight and most interestingly enough there was a specific reddish light a beam of some sort that came straight through their kitchen window obviously everybody from the house was was noticing this because uh, it, they, they too suddenly went through in this case the window to try to see what was going on and then that's when they saw something that was unimaginable at that point her father in particular when he appeared out the window he saw where this light was coming from and then that's when he described it they saw five beings all coming straight towards their home aliens in other words coming straight towards their home in a rather unique fashion they were hopping the way they, that they described it was they were all hopping I guess either in unison or one after the other but that's how it was described a hopping motion straight towards their home and then before they could do anything else I guess in terms of either running away you know the family either deciding to get the heck out of there or maybe even locking themselves into anywhere else it it probably wouldn't have done any such use because what happened next is these beings all went straight through their front door not like the door was open but instead they pretty much just phased straight through the door and then there they were right in front of them and that's when the entire family experienced uh, this abduction thereafter so the way the story goes here is that these beings did something like they made some kind of either telepathic command or something along those lines and it made the family stop still um, so they couldn't move they couldn't do anything necessarily they were in what was described as a frozen state of consciousness but still able to ascertain what was going on so it's not like they were all passed out no they were just frozen solid unable to do anything the way that they described these aliens were they were almost like your classic aliens but here's where things get a little interesting um, there were four of them and they appeared to be about maybe five feet tall or so and then there was another one who was a little bit larger 
So that one was ascertained to be the leader of sorts. Um, they all had the classic pear-shaped design in terms of their head, the very classic wide eyes, and then also in this case they appeared to have small ears and noses. So that was a little different from some of the other tales that you've probably seen how, how um, other aliens don't have those features, but these did. They had those small ears and then they had those noses and then they also had very similar mouths, all of them only being very, very tiny slits and the way that that it was described from them was that these mouths never actually moved instead everything was just communicated through uh, telepathy so they were able to communicate with the family and I guess vice versa uh, and then that way uh, that's how they uh, in a frozen state were able to keep in touch with them now as far as the coveralls, like whatever these things were wearing, so it's interesting to note because back then, like in this case, this tale takes place in the 60s, and I did another one the other day as well. You'll notice that it seems like during that time period, when the adoptions were happening in the 50s and the 60s, maybe even in the 70s, that the aliens' designs seem to be more sci-fi-ish, like whatever was the time during that time period, during those decades of of UFO stories, of cheap B-movies, the type that you see late at night at 3 a.m. where they have cheap special effects. In this case, it seems to be very similar because the way that these beings wore their clothing, their quote-unquote clothing, they had some kind of weird-looking coveralls. They were bluish in color. They had a wide belt. Why aliens would have a belt, I have no idea, but they had it there. And then all also, they had a logo on their sleeves. So kind of like how you look at any military uniform or if you look at any type of specific uniform, even civilian ones, how they have those special, I guess, items right on their shoulders indicating some kind of crest or some kind of designation. This, These set of beings also had them. In this case, they had them as a bird, like it was actually a bird, if you can believe it, a logo of a bird right on their sleeves. And then also, interestingly enough, they wore boots. So I mention all this because uh, that uh, seems to be the stance, how the aliens looked back then, 50s, 60s, 70s, and then cut to later on, later generations, during the 80s, 90s, even up to the 2000s. And it's like the aliens radically changed their appearance. Now they all look like uh, grays, like standard grays, where they have no clothes, very, very skinny bodies, very small, much larger heads. So it's uh, why there's a stark change and difference now compared to back then and why things were very similar all back then just like things are similar now but just under different uh, different circumstances who knows but that's just something that stood out to me when I was reading this story but in any case um, we're back to this uh, particular abduction case so they were all frozen there and they were able to still communicate between each other because the aliens kind of sensed especially from Betty that she did not like having her children in that frozen state of consciousness so in order to reassure her, the aliens would let one of her daughters go, and then the rest were taken outside. And the way that she stated it was, there it was, about 20 feet away, somewhere within her backyard, a classic UFO, like the standard one that you and I know of, uh, the classic circular design, almost looking like a frisbee of sorts. And they were abducted within that spacecraft, and then they went through the usual gamut, I guess you could call it, of the abduction where all of them went through some kind of physical examination and then they all saw a whole bunch of strange equipment. I think I was hearing somewhere where they went to some kind of planet of some sort that looked very much similar to Earth. Another interesting thing, I guess, and but that, that was about it. Now, as far as the twist, the one I was mentioning earlier in my videos, so I read another place that was stating that in her experience, Betty, that when she went uh, on that ship, she was taken to some 
place or some location where she met, I guess, what was called the one. Like in this case, and I'm using that in quotations, like the one, because that's how she described it. Apparently, it was some being of some sort, some leader, someone that it was someone that was behind a giant door, no less, like a giant door literally opened. And then that's where she saw this being, this one. And whatever he was, it was almost like the beings were telling her that they shared, because she was very, very religious, this, this woman Betty, they shared her passion for her religion or for her religions, and then also her passion for Jesus Christ himself. And that this being, this quote-unquote the one that was behind that giant door, apparently shared some really, really secret some fantastic some great knowledge that has to do with I guess some kind of salvation some kind of very specific religious meaning some impact of some sort that'll have a huge uh, I guess focus on the earth and all in a religious manner but for whatever reason she cannot recall that particular uh, item even under hypnosis because this being this quote the one whenever it was imparted on her it was done in such a way that even if it was kept secret and even if it was trying to be recalled under hypnosis it would not uh, happen at least this particular uh, knowledge that this being gave to her just that one single single thing because later on when she went under hypnosis for other items her and her family I guess that's where they were able to explain all the stuff that happened but it's that one thing involving that one knowledge that she could not do so so that's where the twist comes in so all of a sudden this tale suddenly takes on a whole different direction where it's not something involving more of an alien induction but it's like a mix of something involving like a savior something involving her trying to carry the message from the savior and then trying to see uh, like where that takes things later on in her life. So I have my own thoughts on that. I don't know, um, you know, how it's weird. Like, why would aliens kind of have knowledge, I guess, of Jesus Christ? And why would they share the same things involving a human-like religion? In this case, a very specific human-like religion, because I think she was... Christian? Uh, I don't know. Somebody, uh, if they can correct me on that, please let me know. But it, it, of all the worlds, I guess, within the galaxy and of all the worlds within the billions of of very large uh, cluster of galaxies, why then just this one specific spot on Earth with this one specific religion that happens to match the one that Betty has, I guess, a strong devotion to, it just seems way too much like of a coincidence so I don't know um, but that's so uh, that's just at least my thoughts with regards to that particular twist so any case after everything was finished they were brought back um, there was also a hideout alien that was left within the home during this abduction I found that also interesting too it seems like these aliens they were smart enough to realize that if maybe the, if the family was taken away too long, somebody might come to the home to try to see what was going on. So there was an alien left there to try to take care of things in case that happened. And then that was it. The aliens left. That was their only encounter that this family had, that Betty herself had and the family had with regards to uh, these alien beings. Um, Betty has mentioned that she never had any knowledge of UFO folklore before this. So so her running into this, um, it seems to add credence to that fact that this, that there was no ulterior motive, that this was just a happen chance that happened to come across her. But she has taken this abduction as having a very strong religious meaning. And I think that's, uh, I saw some other pictures where it looked like she was with other groups and I think that that's where she goes now I don't know where she is exactly now correctly but I think that's what she uh, essentially I guess best phrase to use is preaches with regards to her abduction that this is all towards a religious angle 
and then that's the word that she's helping to spread with it so in any case that's all the information I have with the Betty Andreessen abduction or the Betty Andreessen case if anyone has anything else that seems to be uh, interesting to note too that would be really great to hear kind of a one of a, a one-shot deal isn't it like I haven't heard of any other UFO case involving a religious aspect like this but if anyone has any other examples that would be really really great to hear too so right everybody thanks again as always take care bye